Welcome to the midweek message from First Grapevine, a United Methodist Church. We're glad you've joined us. Please take a moment and let us know you are watching by registering on our church website or mobile app. We hope this encouraging word will be a blessing for the middle of your week. Welcome to our midweek message. This has been a fun series where we've uh, been able to talk to different people on staff. We've had different outside guests. And today we have uh, a member of our church who is a real treat to get to talk to. I'm very excited to get to introduce you to Tony Waterbury, who is a retired lieutenant colonel with the U.S. Marine Corps. Uh, and this, it's always a pleasure to get to talk to you, but especially this week as we're building up towards 4th of July, and there's just so much going on. I thought now would be the perfect time to sit down and have a talk with Tony. Uh, before we jump in to, well, you can say hi. You want to say hi? I'd like to say hi to all the uh, church friends and those that I don't know that I uh, hope to know soon. Can y'all hear him Okay. I'm just doing a double check. You can leave that in the recording. Uh, and I may tell you while we're talking, just get that microphone up, because we don't want to miss a word that you say. <laughs> They're all golden. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, well, before we, before we jump in, I'll, how about I pray for us? A wit? I'll, how about I pray for us? How's that? Sound? That sounds wonderful. Gracious God. I uh, thank you so much for this church community and for what a blessing it is to all of us. I thank you this day for Tony, uh, for his service to you and for service to his country. We ask that you bless our time together. Be present here with us as we grow closer to you and closer to one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so uh, Tony, 22 years in the Marine Corps service Graduated from the Naval Academy in what year? 1957. 1957. And how long have you been a member here of First Grapevine Church? Since 1999. 1999. Shortly after I met my wife, she had been a, uh, a commun communicant here and... Um, Funny story about that briefly is when we first met, both of us were uh, in a short time found out that we were churchgoers, I being Episcopal and she being Methodist. Well, I took her to a few Sundays at, of Episcopal Church, and it was just prior to Christmas. And uh, after the second or third time, she admitted to me, that the incense that the Episcopals have and the double dipping or genuflection uh, was Love probably a little bit, yes, was oh, a little yeah. bit beyond her. And would I be interested in going to the Methodist Church? I said, God is above and I am down here. I'd, I'd love to go if, if that's what you want. Wise man. See, I, I love how you've only been talking for like 90 seconds and already there's wisdom right there. <laughs> she wants to go to the Methodist church. You just go, just go. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And it was a wonderful decision. Uh, I just, the people here, the love that's been shown, the love I have for the church and, and the music, although as uh, the music director knows I can't read music but I memorize, and uh, that seems to work out after two or three practices. Well, a good Marine knows how to take orders, <laughs> so that helps, I'm sure. Yes, both, uh, both from the music director and my wife. There you go. <laughs> there you go. So you sing, uh, so what all do you do here at the church? You're a member of the Seekers Sunday School class. That's correct, Seekers, and also the, uh, the choir, and the Fishers of Men, a, a group that is fairly well known throughout the church. So it's a men's choral group? Yes, so it you, is. I just like to point out, you sing in both the choir and the Fishers of Men, who both, uh, during non-pandemic times, rehearse on the same day, right? And can I ask this without getting in trouble? How old are you, Mr. Waterbury? I am 84. I'll be 85 in November. He, yeah, that's... That's impressive. Again, you are you are so regular in your attendance. Uh, not not that we're 
taking notes or anything, but I just, <laughs> I love that I always see you around. Like you're always here and you're here for a lot of stuff. And I just, I really, I really appreciate that. So. Well, I appreciate the church welcoming me as often as they do, which is always. I, I love to be here at least once a week. It, uh, it makes me feel even closer to God. I mean, through prayer and reading the Bible, uh, I feel close to God. But you need to come to church because I, it, for me, it kind of puts the cherry on top of the, uh, the dessert. All right. Well, I, I like the way you put that. It's the cherry on top of a dessert, of your week. That's yeah. right. Yeah, I, I I absolutely agree with that. That's how I feel as well. Do you have a favorite Bible verse or a character in the Bible? Well, I guess having been in the military, I, if you count four years of prep school and four years of the Naval Academy and 22 years, that's about 30 years. Uh, I, I love to read and reread the story of Joshua and uh, and what he did uh, you know the Lord while he does he has said to us that there are times when we we fight the uh, the army of the devil uh, he would love it if there were no war but we have been given the chance to make our own decision. But Joshua uh, just went forth and said, Lord, I'm doing this. You, We need to clean this up, and I'm going to be your man. So, yeah, Joshua is a book of the Old Testament, sixth book of the Bible, and talks about uh, the it's the people of Israel, tiny little band of the followers of God, versus the Canaanites who were, uh, according to the Bible, corrupt, warring people. Uh, their, their religions involved a lot of child sacrifice. There's a lot of things that they, as they walked into the new land, uh, that were just shocking. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so then they, they went to war. That's right. Uh, the idea was that, uh, the enemies were not uh, someone that could listen to words. They were, as you've said, they were uh, battling type uh, yeah. folks. So you, in this case, Joshua, or God, fought fire with fire. So, so we mentioned that you were in the military, 22 years with the Marine Corps. Uh, that's, that's an incredible amount of, of service. Uh, what is and you've talked about your church and your love for your local church and you and I were talking before and you know you basically grew up in the Episcopal Church yes. and then raised your family in the Episcopal Church. That's correct. So, uh, ch which by the way, Methodists and Episcopals are cousins. If you're new to either, uh, I'll just throw that out there in case you're you're wanting you want to Google that later. We're uh, we're we're distant cousins, right? Second cousins, you would say. Well, well I Methodist would say and Episcopal so church. because yeah. I believe. Uh, our own church in uh, in Texas was called the Methodist Episcopal Church in 1839. Oh wow! Uh, I believe that's the year. Think, you probably yeah. could correct me since you're a. Pro well, I didn't know that. you were gonna quiz me on dates. I'm I'm not <laughs> sure on that one. I'll have to double check. But you're right. We used to be the and so if you go to a if you find a church in your community with an older building. You'll see like the original sign that says Methodist Episcopal Church, yeah. So, which tells you a little bit of the relationship there. But tell me, what does it mean to you to serve both church and to serve your country? Well, it it has given me a chance through the years to serve two things that I love, and the uh, the military. I always felt at ease, even in days of combat, because of my love for the other one. The Lord will protect me, and not my will, but thy will be done, is what I've always thought about. And my two tours in Vietnam, I felt I had been educated on how I should act. 
unearthly things. So I knew that the heavenly things would take care of themselves. <laughs> the Lord really doesn't need my help. Um, but he, I never felt pressured as far as, oh my goodness, I tried to use common sense, but uh, combining the two was, was something that has made my life very, very wonderful. Wow. Do you, so you were in combat in Vietnam. Yes, sir. Two tours, you say. 1965, initial landings, we landed at a place called Chu Lai, which was south of Da Nang. We set up an airfield. I say we. I was an artillery commander, but the, uh, the CBs and the engineers put in a field. And then I went back there in 1969. Well, that microphone clutch, we don't want to miss a word okay. of that. <laughs> so, and you, so you were with the first unit that went into Vietnam. Yeah, I was among the first unit, yeah. uh, yes. We had some Marines that, uh, uh, that went up north and north of Da Nang, and we went south of Da Nang. Yeah. But it was the first Marine Brigade from Hawaii uh, had the honor of landing first. Did you see combat in anywhere else in the world? Or no, I did not. Just Vietnam? Yes. Yeah. Which, I mean, don't get me wrong, more, more than a lifetime's worth. I just wanted to ask about yes, your experience. It, uh, yeah. it, it's more than a lifetime's worth. That's yeah. true. Do you, do you have any, and you can say no, or you can say no to this, because we're just sitting here having a conversation with, with Tony. Do you have any stories from that time or anything about that experience of being in, representing your country in Vietnam that you'd like to say? Yeah, there's a couple of stories that, uh, that are somewhat humorous. Um, in looking back, it, it's like many things that when you go through them the first time, they uh, they aren't that humorous, but uh, the second when you look back and you've and God has gotten you back, it, it's uh, it's a humorous story. It may not seem humorous to you. One of the landings when the first big operation that we had, uh, we were hella lifted. My artillery could be hella lifted into combat. And my my cannons were brought into uh, into the area, into the zone of fire. And uh, I came in on another one, and I got out in a field, and I saw a, another captain standing up on a hill waving, and I didn't know really what he was doing. I was later to find out he was telling me get back in the helicopter. So. I finally got up there and talked to him, and I said, what, uh, what were you trying to say? He said, uh, that field is mined. I said, oh, my. <laughs> at that time, and there were many other times, but at that time I said, Lord, thank you very much. You've gotten an ignorant young Marine captain through a field <laughs> without stepping on a mine. Uh, now it's kind of humorous. Uh, when the captain... Talked to me. We were both captains, and he told me that. I, he said, you're white. I said, yeah, I just, the blood has drained <laughs> from my face. But uh, anyway, that was a kind of a humorous thing. Wow. So with your, with your time in the, in the Marines, I, I, I like to ask people who have long service records this, this question. Uh, what, what wisdom do you have for the rest of us? What do you think that you learned in this service that uh, are good life little nuggets of wisdom <laughs> that you feel like sharing? You, you know, even though I'm 84 years old, I feel that I need to live another 50 years to get the wisdom that you're asking me for, but I can... I will attempt to touch on that, is the first thing is judge everybody by what they do, not their color, not their ethnic background. And I found out in the Marine Corps that we 
were, as I look back, quite advanced uh, because we had folks that were Jewish, we had blacks, we had Catholics, and we were all Marines. And we didn't say, well, these guys do well or they didn't. If they didn't, it was their own doing. It had nothing to do with the package. And I guess the other thing is, just talk to God every day and let him know how much you appreciate that day because that day may be the last day before you go to heaven. I guess that those two things have stuck in my mind for years <laughs> and hopefully more years. I, I appreciate that, and I, I've known you long enough to see that you live by that. By, I try to. Yeah, do not judge people by the way that they look or anything about them. Treat each person as a creation of God, and thank God for every day. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, I, so you, Tony got to travel to Israel with us uh, last year in November, and he turned 84 the day after we got back. But I, uh, we, you and I had such a special conversation because you came up to me at church. It was after church, pulled me aside, and you, uh, you told me you were considering signing up for the trip, interested in going but that you wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with you going with your advanced age mm -hmm. uh, and, and some complications that you were facing at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, I, I love that you were concerned for how that impacted other people. But you said at that time, you said, I th I, you said to me, I thank God for every day and I want to assure you, anything happens to me on this trip or whenever I'm in church for that matter, then I'm going, doing something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. That's and I just, correct. I uh, appreciated that so much. And uh, of course, I've, I've had my own health complications. So I said to you, yes. I said to you, Tony, just because uh, you've been here a few, a few more years than me doesn't mean you're <laughs> any more fragile than I am at this point. And uh, if they have to FedEx us back, that's what they're going to have to do. <laughs> and we had a fantastic time. We did. On that trip. We certainly did. Do you have a, a highlight from, from that trip for, for getting to go to Israel? There were so many highlights, but the specific highlight, I would guess when my wife Jill and I were in Gethsemane and just thinking and saying, this is where Christ was just before he was crucified. What the... You could feel it in the air, or at least I could feel it in the air, and I thought, how fortunate that I'm able to be here before I pass from this, this earth. It was just, it was a wonderful time. As, as I said when I started the conversation, there, there were no low points uh, when you uh, baptized me in the Jordan, that was certainly wonderful too. That was. I, I'm so glad you mentioned Gethsemane. That's why I turned to them and smiled because um, I've already preached the message for this coming Sunday. Yes, this will come out on Wednesday, and so those at home aren't going to know that uh, I already mentioned Gethsemane in my sermon because I'm preaching on Psalm one. Mm -hmm. You know, the righteous are like the tree planted by water, and I'm and I showed a picture that I took. Of these olive trees, they've been there for centuries. Yes. And are they the exact trees that were there 2,000 years ago? Mm -hmm. It's possible. We don't know. But it's it's possible. You know, yes. And to think how much had they lived through all that time. Yeah. And it was, you're right, it's really special to be right there. It that Yes, it is. Um, I Being a huge baseball fan, it would be like uh, somebody being at, Yankee Stadium the first time when they're a kid yeah. and they go, oh my God. Think about it, yeah. Ruth. Babe Ruth, Lou Gehrig. Gehrig. Here. Yeah. But somebody far exceeding but Ruth they, and Gehrig. No, but I like that. <laughs> I, I like that analogy. That's right. But so much more so. But you're right there on those. Yes. 
yeah. those the in that place. Yeah, it's such a such a special place, such a special moment. I really loved from that trip that where we were staying in Jerusalem was close to a park where the the United States gave the country of Israel a replica of the Liberty Bell, like an exact copy. And this one is, it's just in a, just sitting there in a park and it's only up yay high. And so I, I found it one night and then and I, I told myself, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take Tony out there. And you, you'd been tired because we'd been walking a lot that day. Yes. And yeah. I'm pretty sure I didn't tell you what we were going to do. <laughs> no, you didn't. I, I did. I, thought, I just said. Uh, I, I'm I, off on another mission with Grant who <laughs> is 50 years younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just said, I just said to you, uh, I know you're tired. I want to take you on a walk, though, at night. I said, just trust me, it's going to be worth it. And you, and you just said, okay. <laughs> and so, yeah. But it was, it was a highlight to me because, it, unlike the real Liberty Bell, you can get up and touch this one. Yes. yes. And I felt like I was introducing a national treasure to a national treasure. Well, that's uh, very. That was kind. in a holy place. So it, it was very, yeah. It was a trip that when Jill and I got back, as you said, we really didn't know where we were going. We got back and we said, that was a wonderful trip. I Was that, it was right around the corner. And Jill said, not exactly. But I said, well, I feel now that it was, it was very easy to go and come because of what I could see combining the Liberty Bell and God. Yeah. Well, with your with your wisdom, and I love your peaceful outlook. Uh, what advice do you have for uh, those of us who are living in this time of pandemic, as we're still socially distancing and wearing masks mm-hmm. and working from home? Oh, uh, do you have any advice? And that can range from: Do you have a movie you recommend we watch because we're all home, or <laughs> what would you say to someone who's struggling with the pandemic right now? Well, the good Lord will allow this to pass. Uh, obey, or I won't say obey. Use your common sense on making sure you stay healthy because the Lord wants you to stay healthy. So it's your decision. And then I would go back to the two things I had mentioned earlier. Thank the good Lord for each day you have, because uh, Jill and I have some friends that uh, have passed away with the coronavirus, and it comes quickly. So be aware that... This will pass, and that if you feel strong enough uh, to to do what you should in your own mind, then do it. Yeah. What would you say to someone, or how should we pray for our country right now? What's a prayer that you have for us? I think the prayer for my country is that we, it goes back to another thing that I said, that we realize that God made every one of us, everybody you see on television, everybody you see in church, everybody you see anywhere is just like you. They may have had different experiences, but I pray that that the country can come together. It uh, it is something that if we don't, we will lose our country. We will. God will say it's time for America to go because they don't realize and love what I've given them. So give thanks to God and pray for peace and for coming together. Yes. And how can God use me? You know, how can God use us to help yes. bring people together? Each one of us is a hand or a foot of God. And that's a pretty big responsibility if you just yeah. kind of lean back and think about it. Yeah. 
So just, just love people. It, it's a simple thing to do. Even a Marine can do that. <laughs> <laughs> this Marine graduated from the U.S. Naval Academy, so <laughs> you're a little bit... Well, maybe, yeah. maybe it was that Naval Academy training uh, that kind of took the edge off being a Marine. <laughs> but, but I appreciate w what you're saying of uh, do what is right. Pray for peace, pray for coming together, and be a part of it. Yes. God's hands and God's feet today. Well, we've uh, asked, talked about some heavy things. Now let's talk about something a little bit lighter. Uh, this is 4th of July this week. Are you and Jill doing anything to celebrate 4th of July? I don't think we will, special. Uh, we, being over 50, both of us, <coughs> we, uh, we wear See what our... what did there? Yeah. We wear our masks and uh, uh, we get out, we walk a couple miles every morning uh, so we get a chance to go out. Uh, we spend the rest of the day doing things around the house uh, and usually in the evening we, uh, we see some of these old movies that... Uh, that we probably should have seen the first time. Uh, when I say movies, television, uh, we went through all the Soprano uh, shows, which most everybody else saw the first time. So doing three a night, it took us uh, four weeks to finish the Sopranos. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's a, we, that's a sprint right there, yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, right now we're uh, on uh, Monk. I don't know if you're oh, yeah. familiar. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that uh, Jill has said that uh, I remind her a great deal of Monk because, of course, I have to have everything right, exactly right. Everything just so, but, yeah. He's a, yeah, a detective with obsessive compulsive disorder. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Which I think that would almost be hard to watch right now because he's so afraid of germs and everything. And yes. I think that's kind of how we all, that's kind of our new normal today. That's but true. That's still, that's a good show. That's a good lighthearted show. It, it, that's right. Uh, it, uh, I, I try to read in the evenings also. Uh, so. Well, what's a book you would recommend? Well, one that, that I'm reading now, which I am enjoying, I had um, a number, uh, 20 years ago, I uh, audited a, um, a course at the University of Dallas on humanism and the Renaissance. All right. Um, it was very interesting the first time, but I really didn't have the time to, I had the time, I didn't take the time to uh, read it as closely as I have been. And that is so interesting uh, of the changes that came about with the Renaissance and how these, uh, these men uh, stepped forth and brought us out of the dark ages. Uh, right now, and I knew, it was, I knew this was coming because as I, as I said, I'd read it before, but I want to watch closely because I'm about a chapter away from uh, Sir Thomas More mm -hmm. and Luther uh, and Erasmus and all those fellows of that period. And these are giants of philosophy, humanism, and of the world. They changed a lot of, a lot of things. What's the name of this book? It's... Uh, Humanism and the Renaissance. Humanism and the Renaissance. And don't ask me for an author. No, 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 no. I thought that's good. <laughs> Google knows the answer. Yeah, mm. they can find it. All right. Yeah, that's the, the great thing about uh, nowadays. If you even come close, you got a good chance of being yeah, able you got to a find good it chance on you Google. Find it. Yeah. Well, how about this? Before we, before we wrap up our conversation, because I could talk to you all day. But uh, well, I we, I enjoy talking to you, and I, and I could also so go. 
Well, I, I want to say uh, on behalf of your church, thank you for your service to our country and thank you for your service to our God. You know, uh, it's an honor to get to, to see you. And, you know, uh, y- you've had some weeks you haven't felt great the past couple of years. You've had some struggles. That that it, happens when you get over your 80. It, hey, it happens to those of us uh, in our 30s, too. Yeah. Uh, but I love that you not only come to to serve, you not show up to serve when you can, you show up when you probably can't. Uh, you push yourself to be present. And when you are singing in the choir, and especially the Fishers of Men, the men's choral group, you're up there standing next to young people, young young men who need this wisdom and this peace and need to hear the stories and just get to know you. And I uh, need to hear that reminder to be thankful for every day. And we won't get that if we, if you know, if people like you didn't try to connect with, with us, to try to connect with the world. If you didn't share your light and your joy, that just would be a little bit of hole in our lives. And I just appreciate uh, how much... How much you do that? How much you care for all of us? So, uh, and you do so much that I, I can't get into. But uh, again, if I, if I, for to our members, for our people who call us their church home, who know us, uh, on your behalf, uh, I, I say thank you to Tony for all that you do. Well, thank you very much for your comments. And all I would say about that is, you youngsters, and I say youngsters. <laughs> I was hoping he would use that word. <laughs> yeah. No, it's important that what I may do in any small way for somebody that's younger, remember that when you get to be 84 or 65 or 102 and do that for the next generations. That is what God wants us to do, to be an example, to be one that we can look up to and say, you know, maybe Tony Waterbury is not that bad an example. <laughs> well, I think you're a great example. <laughs> Thank well, you. Uh, do, you, do you have anything that you would like to say to, uh, to our church, you know, since we can't be in here physically together, uh, to your church home? Do you have anything you'd like to say? Uh, You can just look straight at that camera right next to the TV. Okay. I think the only thing I'd say, uh, I've I've given you my thoughts over many, many years, but something I really miss, and uh, and I saw our choir director this morning, Jason, I miss singing. I really do. And without accompaniment, I'm... (laughs) It's kind of rough for Jill, but she puts up with it. And to get back with the Fishers and men would just be wonderful. So let's all try and stem the tide of this pandemic so I can get back to sing with the Fishers and men. <laughs> <laughs> what a good... Yeah, Jason is in the back. He's applauding right now. Yeah, he's really <laughs> excited to hear that. I'm excited to hear that too. And you're right. Uh, let's all keep praying. Let's all keep uh, calm heads on our shoulders. And we're going to get through this. Yes. And yes. we'll be back in here singing again. And I, I said... You know, as we're talking to the people that we know, but I especially wanted to introduce you to the people we've not met yet. You know, we've got people who are watching who yes. uh, haven't set foot in here. And so I want to encourage you. You hang in there. You stick with us. And before too long, you too will get to know uh, retired <laughs> Lieutenant Colonel Tony Waterbury. And uh, you will get to come in and meet uh, not just Tony, who's one of our absolute finest, but we'll, this is a wonderful community of people, and we just can't wait to meet you and to, and to, for us to join in the conversation together. That is for sure. Please, please come to us. We want you with us. And don't, don't hesitate. Anything we can do for you, with you, about you, we're ready, willing, and able. You heard it from the man. Uh, bef- before we close out, would you, would you say a prayer for us? Yes, I will. Dear Lord, thank you for all that you have given us, not only in this church, 
not only in the United States, not only in Grapevine, but in the world. We have some bumps in our road, but have us smart enough to realize that with your help, we can get through this. Thank you for this opportunity that the church has given me to say a few words. Hopefully, they will be helpful to somebody. Thank you for all that I've been given and all that we've been given. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Amen. Thank you, Tony. All right, have a safe 4th of July, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Go in peace. For current information about the effects of COVID-19 precautions at First Grapevine Church, visit firstgrapevine.org slash COVID-19 updates.